<laughs> we'll see. <laughs> what is the plan? Um, I, I imagine when I went back to sleep, you guys had a conversation. It was less <laughs> of a conversation, a lot more a chin gun. Mm, we'll see about that. <laughs> um, chin works on threats. So like, I can't, I can't offer him anything up front. I gotta offer him like the threat of not getting something in return. Everything is, is it, it's always a yes. It's just a matter of how much. You know, we have the new year coming up. I'm here for now, and we'll see what negotiations we uh, come up with. Allegedly. Allegedly, we'll see. We'll see about that. Do you plan on paying poker at all? I'm, I'm, look, look, I'm currently working on my contract with All for Y right now. So there's not many things I can disclose at this current stage uh, in the contract negotiations. There's a feeling out process in these things. Like there's an exchange of thoughts, an exchange of wants and needs. <laughs> oh, my mom wanted me to be a lawyer for sure. My mom wanted me to be a lawyer so bad. I get an attorney in this house. To be fair, like I thought I wanted it too, but it was mostly from like watching Law and Order. He wanted to be a lawyer. Then he wanted to be a philosopher. Then he wanted to be a basketball player. And he said, now I don't want to be a lawyer. I want to get in finance or something, whatever. It's okay, it's fine. It's like in my career, so I'm happy. As first generation immigrants, like our parents brought us here and then there is like, okay, now what are you going to do to make it worth it? You know, in my culture, it's like a, to be successful, you have to be like a professionalist. You have to make money. Not so much to take care of them, but because they don't want us to go through all of that. So I wanted to go to Seton Hall University, which was an extremely ex overpriced uh, university. <laughs> um, and I wanted to go there uh, because it had a really nice finance program. In that point, he was trying to do the best for me, not for him. She made it work. Like, I went and we paid a bunch of money. This woman paid off all my student loans and everything. I didn't go to class. Uh, I didn't do anything I was like really supposed to be doing uh, because I was playing poker. I thought I could play poker for money. I didn't know how far that would take me, but I was a fan. Like, I was such a fan of Tom Dwan. There was this guy that came on on late TV on Channel 4, Poker After Dark, and he was some white kid from New Jersey. He was young like me. He played crazy, and he was just killing it. And I was really into sports. But I was never gifted in terms of like, I was never extremely tall to play basketball. I was never like, I didn't to throw hard or anything like that to play baseball. But like, I saw a game that like, these guys are kind of average people. I didn't understand the game. Like no one I knew played the game. Um, but I knew that people talked about poker online. And I knew that there were books about poker and I knew that there were people better than me. He's always either reading about something or watching a video related to poker his determination to get better. I've seen that for many years. I didn't win because I wasn't good at the time. <laughs> so um, that didn't work out. <laughs> While I was in college, I was like playing online, um, sitting in the back of the class. And I remember calculating how much were the credits and then seeing how much I could win so I could just pay off this class so that my mom didn't get mad. I knew that he was doing something right. because he was gone for like days and I, you know, or like coming home super late, like he'd like leave the keys in the mailbox or open and it was like 3 a.m. I knew at that point, like if I was gonna continue to go to college, like I really need to go to class and I kind of need to stop playing poker. And I didn't want to do that. So I kind of like stopped going to college and just like got a job and like started working and I would 
take trips to Atlantic City. There was never a moment where he was not on his computer. And we would fight with him like, Chris, it's dinner. Like, come eat dinner with us, come upstairs. No, I'm working. And then I'm like, what are you working on? <laughs> like, what is he working on? I would schedule my days off very uh, strategically. So I would have Tuesday and Wednesday off. So on Monday, when I got out of work, I would take the bus, go to Port Authority, and I would buy a Bluff magazine. And they only sold it at one specific store. And on the way down, I would read all the strategy articles in that Bluff magazine. And when I got there, I was like super ready. Okay, so I was in Atlantic City and this was one of my, you know, many trips that where I took like very long sessions and I was at Caesars and I was playing and I remember I took two four hour energy drinks and I used to put them right next to my cards too. So like they knew I was ready and I was playing for 56 hours straight and the room manager comes up to me and he's like, hey, like, you know, do you have a card? And I was like, no. And he's like, do you have a room? Like you've been here all day. And I was like, no. And he's like, do you want food? I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, um, and he was just like, no, you need a card so like you could get a room and like stay. You've been here this whole time. I didn't know any of these things. Like I didn't know there was like, I knew that there was a hotel room that was probably like $250 that would cut into my win rate. Like I didn't know any of, like I didn't know there was like any exchange in terms of like I play and you give me something back. And he was like, I'm gonna make you a card and I'm gonna get you a room. And like, at that time I was like, wow, I live in luxury. So like, I go to my room and it's like a hotel room with a king size bed and like, and I got this for free. And like, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm done. Like I'm, <laughs> like, like, I'm coming here all day. Like, this is awesome. I don't have to like stay 48 hours straight. Like, I am living the life now. Where did you learn about the boardwalk? Oh, I didn't know there was a boardwalk in Atlantic City for like three years. <laughs> I never saw the boardwalk and the craziest part about the boardwalk is that Caesars where I used to play Connects to the boardwalk like it is like I was like 90 feet away from the boardwalk at all times I didn't know that thing existed. I didn't care On the way back, I was either exhausted or like really sad. I was exhausted from playing, but if I was winning, I was sad that I had to leave. And if I was losing, I was sad because like now I had to like make money to go back. The bad thing about winning is that you would win more than you would make at work. So it's kind of like, man, I have to go work and like I'm going to make whatever, $12.50 an hour or something. But I just made like $300, you know, like, and it was always that like, well, what if I just go down there every day? So my family didn't know that I was taking poker this seriously. They didn't know that I was playing. They didn't know like the real reason why I wasn't like going to classes or anything like that. Uh, so they didn't know anything.